Good morning, afternoon, evening. Time is fake. Welcome back to the Variety Half Hour. Today I am joined by the magnificent Ganjo. He's back, back, back at it again. Ganjo, how's it going? It's going pretty well. How are you doing, Cheyenne? I'm pretty great. I'm usually the one running late, but to date it was you. Period. You know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, getting cute takes a little longer than expected. So, you know, unfortunate. I was a little late. You know, sorry for that, but we're here now and about to have a good little time. Great. I'm not going to explain that I'm not passive aggressive and was genuinely happy to be able to put on eyeliner. <laughs> I know it's probably tough. I really struggle putting things next to my eye, so I get it. And with the wings, baby. Period. Nice and sharp. Okay. All right. So we know how it's doing. You know the game. We're going to pick some topics. Uh, actually, fun fact, don't have challenges anymore. We're just going to talk some news after the topics. Okay, Ben. I like it. Yes. But before I get into that, How's it going? Uh, it's going good. I got some new glasses. You know, okay. uh, my boss was yelling at me the whole time. Like, when are you going to get glasses? I was like, hey, I feel you, bro. Because he could catch my dumb ass squinting. So I was like, <laughs> all right, let me let me get him off my back and actually give me a chance to see, you know, get myself off my back. Right. So I got the glasses. And uh, so I, I like being able to see. That's fun. I haven't run into too many things recently, so that's always good. And, uh, you know, I've been running still, so I've actually upgraded. You know, I think the last time we talked, I'm pretty sure I was at three miles still. Maybe yeah. an inch and a four. No, you just started four. Yeah, I just started. I'm already in five, and I'm on my way to go to six. So more to come later about that. But, you know, I'm on up and up with the running. I've become like a little obsessed, if you may say, but I've been chilling. Okay, long distance, sir. Okay. Um, that's actually really good. I was talking to Justin, who started doing Orange Theory, and he was talking about how the girl next to him was able to run like the entire 40 minutes with a heartbeat in the green range. Oh my god. <laughs> you know how Orange Theory is like done by colors? Mm-mm. And so basically like green is almost like aerobic exercises. Mm -hmm. And cardio is supposed to be like an orange, but red is like a little too much on the heartbeat. Okay. So, so they were in the green the whole time? Yeah, she was in the green the whole time. And that's where you want to be, right? I mean, it's pretty good. It means that she wasn't really like challenging herself, though. But it's also mm. impressive. Right. No, I try to push myself every time I run, so I feel it. Yeah. Nice. All right. We have topics one through 10. Pick a flavor. I'm going to go 10. I'm feeling like a 10 right now. Okay. What's your favorite sign or effect of aging? Mm, I feel like I have this obsession with gray hair where I'm like, I don't know why people don't like how they look with gray hair. I know, I guess it's when I get to that point, I might have feeling towards it, but I feel like my hair is going to look cuter when it's gray. You feel me? I, yeah. We all get a distinctive like color too. Like sometimes it's white, sometimes it's gray, sometimes it's like gray and black, salt and pepperish. So I feel like it gives us, you know, a different character, a different personality trait, you know, that we, we wasn't living with for a long ass time. So I feel like people should embrace their gray hairs more, but, you know, I'm not here to tell somebody uh, how they should be living their life, but I like the aspect of grays coming in. I 100% understand you because I had gray hairs at, like, the age of eight, mm -hmm. and each one I found, I was so excited. I was, like, showing my mom, I was showing my friends, I was like, do you see this gray <laughs> hair that I have? I have this gray hair. I'm so wise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was a little know it all. Yeah. So I was like, mm, I, this is so weird, but my coworkers have like the smoothest looking armpits. Mm -hmm. And I get hella jealous sometimes. Like Barbie smooth. Yes. Oh well, God. I guess I'm not that close, but from 
five to seven feet away, yes. <laughs> yeah. My arms are like, I don't grow a lot of arm hair, but uh, my uh, armpit hair, it like, it like goes to a certain point. And I, it doesn't grow a lot either. It's been yeah. like the same length for years. Yeah, I, I think that's it. most people mm-hmm. that don't shave. Right. Because I feel like, because they say if you shave um, anything, that, that makes like, you grow more hair in that area, correct? Basically, it grows in darker, like mm. more... Uh, more, stable I suppose more dense yeah because now your follicles are being used and so it's like it's brand new pushed up mm-hmm. hair so yeah it's like but I mean I don't know it's weird because your nails can grow until any length so like mm-hmm. hypothetically at some point your armpit hair should still be growing but the I brain is done the research the brain is very interesting and it will like start and stop things when you don't need it anymore like Mm -hmm. i don't know how we got onto the whole hair topic but (laughs) think about like your eyebrows right your eyebrows grow to a certain point and then like i don't do anything to my eyebrows and they just stay like that so but if i didn't have eyebrows that cut my eyebrows off they eventually grow back correct yes maybe not as full but they'll grow back so it's kind of like hmm maybe it just doesn't grow as much but your brain like tells you okay i have to produce hair here yeah. Versus I don't have to produce hair here. I guess it's, isn't it just like for the sweat? Like to keep sweat out of our eyes? I, if it does, it doesn't help me. Like when I'm running, <laughs> I sweat so much. I didn't have to buy like headbands, like, you know, old yeah. school, like, you know, headbands working out and stuff. But because every time I run, it's like an abundance like a lot of sweat comes down and it comes down my forehead to the point sometimes I can't see. I do a lot of pushing it like this way, spreading it out so it don't get in my eyes. But I think I kind of like kind of make it easier to get in. I don't know. I'd be struggling because yeah. whatever. But I sweat a lot. So I don't think my eyebrows work in that way. But I think they are supposed to be there. But I think I just over sweat and I overuse the point yeah. of them being there. I don't, yeah. I don't think our bodies were prepared for, um, fun runs okay <laughs> i don't think they had that in mind for us they didn't they like who out here really running for fun like this right they're like this is for when you're being attacked by a tiger a tiger <laughs> all right well i mean that's a good time i mm. think my favorite sign of aging or an effect of aging is like blaming other people less oh, like yeah. As a child, obviously, you just don't have as much autonomy. And so it's like, that person did this and that person did this. And I feel so helpless. But Mm -hmm. it's like, as you grow older, you're obviously like, damn, that person's kind of crazy. Back to my life. And so I do enjoy that part of aging, of just like being able to be an individual, even in my head. Where it's like your head is probably the place where things get the most messed up. Yeah, no, that's real. Like I, I agree. I feel like the issue is some people don't get to that point where they do try to take more accountability for whatever's happening around them. So mm-hmm. having like autonomy about like what you eat, where you go, when you sleep, like when you want to take your shower, when you want to brush your teeth, like you know, like you have to be like the owner of everything. So you have to take more responsibility of things. So no, I agree with that. I think that's a good thing that comes along with aging. Uh, Cause you know, I yeah. think more people should focus on that. Yeah. Cause if you get a cavity in your thirties, it's not because you had a lot of sweets growing up. Like, sir, <laughs> okay, get, get the flaws. They figure it out. All right, let's choose another topic. One through ten, no ten. Mm, I'm gonna go one because I feel like we're number one. Oh crap! Okay, hold on. I forgot to replace number one. I mean, we can go number two. <laughs> no, I just found it. I have some things that I'm supposed to like revamp mm-hmm. things. I got you. Um, but. What are the signs that you're spiraling? Uh, 
the signs that I'm spiraling is when I get really flustered and frustrated. Like I can get frustrated sometimes to a certain point or I can get a little flustered and you know, I like take a deep breath, figure it out, reset, okay, get here or whatever. But when I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just like super, just like everywhere, flustered. Like when I, when nothing is going right, that's when I know I'm spiraling. Like when I just, when I just feel like, I guess you get the sense that, damn, all this shit happened at one time. God damn, I know this is gonna happen, but damn, like, oh my god, like you, you start getting into a mode. Like, when is it gonna stop? And then that's when the spiral can come. But as long as I can yeah. like keep myself away from like feeling like, oh my God, this is just so much piling on. Like I always gotta think about, okay, don't spiral, like, you know, it's gonna be not this this poopy after this, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's definitely more of a physical manifestation. Um one, I can't sleep. Two, I start things and do other things before I can start so like if I try to multitask and nothing goes well then I know I'm spiraling Mm -hmm. (laughs) like if I'm trying to read a book and cook or something like silly like that or Mm -hmm. I'm trying to wash dishes but I'm also trying to get dressed it's like if I try to do two things that don't make sense together at the same time I'm like oh girl chill like this is you're like getting overwhelmed trying to do two things two or three things at once and you're Mm -hmm. doing none of them well which never helps which never helps Mm -hmm. so definitely my sign of spiraling is just trying to do too many things at once because I'm like oh I need to pack a lunch but I also need to put lotion on and now my my tubberware is greasy like, girl, why were you doing so much? Okay, so are you naturally just like a multitasker? No, that's mm. how I can tell I'm spiraling because I think of so many things that I have to do that I try to do them all together. And it's like, you can't mop the floor and then brush your cat. Like, I will actually add on to, it. I'll add on to that and say, like, I'm like the, like, I do the opposite if I got too much going on. Like, if I, mm-hmm. let's say I I purposely want to do X, Y, and Z, or want to get X, Y, and Z done in not an unrealistic time frame, but I just want to do it. And they're like big projects, right? Mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z, they're just big projects. I may just not do anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's another reason why I know I'm spiraling. If I just like, have all these plans and none of them get enacted like none of them I I feel like let's say I'm feeling like okay I don't want to show too much time on this one if I'm not doing this so I need to do this if I'm not doing this like so and then I just don't do any of the any of the three and I just don't do it at all so like I feel like that's like another level to like my spiraling when like I want to do too much because I'm like naturally like a multitasking person like I can do yeah. two things at once somewhat or be able to manage multiple things at the same time, as long as I'm conscious, like, okay, I'm managing this, this, this right now. I just, that's all I need to know. But if it becomes too much, I just like, in a, in another sense, I just like completely shut down. Yeah. I I kind of relate to that in the way of if I'm not just spiraling, but kind of, well, no, maybe also spiraling because I feel like I spiral when I'm anxious, but when I'm depressed and I don't create subtasks for my goals, Mm -hmm. there are no goals. Okay. If (laughs) If I need this episode out Friday and I don't pick a day to edit, upload, and create a topic, there is no episode. <laughs> that's facts. That's complete facts. <laughs> so. And I, I think that's exactly what I was trying to say too. Like I think you like inc- yeah. like encapsulated everything I was trying to say in that one phrase. So I like that. No, because that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's real, not man. getting done. <laughs> Just not. Yeah. As you know, um, 
there are writers and actors on strike Mm -hmm. and Bethany Franklin is asking why aren't reality stars also going on strike we may as well because we're getting screwed too which I agree uh I think the I don't know I I do see it as kind of like, okay, streaming networks is just joshing everybody. And they kind of saying, okay, we ain't about to pay none of y'all because I don't know if they're not making money off this stuff or as much money as they thought they would. But like, I'm just trying to understand how you using somebody else's likeness or the hard work that they did, the art that they contributed to and not want to pay them for it. So mm-hmm. I, I I kind of agree with the Bethany Franco situation, but I think she's, I think she's more so focused which I think she should be focused on all reality TV, but I think she's more focused on just like the reoccurring reality TV stars on one show and mm-hmm. how protected they are like, maybe like Housewives or like Married to Medicine or like Vanderpump Rules. So you basically, I feel like if you're on a season and people are streaming your episode or whatever, I think you should get paid for it. She thinks the same thing. Uh, quoted, the former star of Bravo's Real House, Real Housewives of New York said, Hollywood is on strike, entertainers are fighting for residuals, and no one will promote anything. Why isn't reality TV on strike? She mentions other shows like um, The Hills, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Jersey Shore, as they are generated millions of dollars entertained people globally globally her name and likeness likeness and content are used for years to come for free on episodes where she was paid pennies for her work Pen- mm-hmm. peanuts hate not peanuts, peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay well, and so okay. yeah i mean she's saying that all reality tv stars should try to unionize unionize and go under SAG. I mean, that helps SAG out for sure. That's like a whole group of people who could be paying a little twenty dollars a month just to get some protection. But I don't. I just I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them fight it out. I do feel like they deserve money, and I I hope the right people get ahead of this, and the right people actually benefit from this, and they have the right people around that can you know help get their voice across as best as possible. Because I think it's hard and with the support because i think little side note i hope the cops don't see this i think everybody should be going on strike right now. we all should be on strike i don't know why we're not like it's just like that's just every company is just abusing its workers and in a sense that if it's time if it's always being there it's just abuse all around I, I don't, i'm not even a person who use like abuse as like a crazy word like not a crazy word mm-hmm. but like in my vocabulary often but they're literally abusing this so it's it's like what's going on here so yeah. i think this is just a step in the right direction uh i don't know it's the issue is like imagine survivors going on strike and and then never getting a chance to come back anyway because they already be survivor already be hoeing them like okay be quiet and stay stay chill let me talk to my shit sorry <laughs> i'll talk to my shit but like basically my point is people can play the game and then not get brought back for ever or at all. It's people who play three or four times. Like why has Joe Anglin played three times? Make it make sense. Who really is clamoring to see Joe Anglin? Like, I'm sorry. Like they bring people back more often. And no shade, what Boston Rod played five times? That's crazy. Somebody played five times, these people haven't played twice. So it's just like, what are you gonna do? You go go under SAG and go unionize and never replace Survivor again or whatever. I think that's that's the battle a lot of people have to go to. So, But I really do hope they can get this taken care of and kind of get their cash because any any content that's on streaming service should be getting paid for. Yeah, and there is currently a lawsuit. Um, basically, a lot of reality stars are being represented by Freeman and Geragos. And their clients have been mentally, physically, and financially victimized while working on different series. They claim cast members are fueled with alcohol, deprived of food and sleep, Mm -hmm. and denied mental health treatment, and that acts of sexual violence have been covered up. 
looking at you. Are you the one? Less than three weeks later, they demanded that the whole network of NBCU release reality stars and crew from their non-disclosure agreements as they are hiding the systemic rot in the company's lucrative reality TV empire. Mm. You can ask them to take away NDAs. That's crazy. Yeah. That's why. And <laughs> Bravo said that NDAs are not intended to prevent disclosure, not intended by cast and crew of unlawful acts in the workplace, and they have not been enforced in that matter. Enforced, I but I mean, I, I think I agree with that. You can still threaten people. Mm-hmm. So, like Bravo, the company said that they NDA are not intended to prevent disclosure. So that means it it has. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, as Big Brother fans, it's not as bad as some of these dating reality TV shows. And I think mm-hmm. that that's something that we should bring up. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think alcohol should not be involved in anything that they're doing dating wise. Because I feel like alcohol gives people mixed signals no matter what. So like, when you get too drunk, you might think somebody fuck with you and they really not. So I don't know. I think there's an irresponsibility on a lot of these shows. Look at listen, I watch Zeus, but look at Zeus. Like Zeus don't care. <laughs> Zeus do not give a fuck. Because once you signed, I don't like you damn near signing your rights. Like if anything crazy to happen, like hopefully you don't die. I'm pretty sure if you died or anything, you can sue the hell. I think if anything happened, you could still sue them. If it's anything crazy. But they still just be, I think it's just too much alcohol and too much drugs, yeah. like just all around. Like the imagine bachelor. if, okay, imagine if uh, they supplied the house guests with weed <laughs> over alcohol. Like they feel like, they feel like if they don't got alcohol, they won't have a show. Like imagine. The drag race. They let them have weed. Allegedly. Mm. I mean, that's the good thing about Zeus. They let them have weed. They be, they be sparking the fuck up. Let me blow that bitch back. I say, oh my God. Okay. Sorry. So <laughs> I have another news article. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about this. And this is on the psychology of conspiracy theorists. More than just paranormal uh, paranoia. Dun, dun, dun. As we get into this, are there any like conspiracy theories or people who have conspiracy theories that you're like, that comes to mind? Well, I don't think we went to the moon, but that's just me. I think I don't, I don't really trust it. Like not saying I care too much about it. Like, you know, I don't think it's unfeasible to go to the moon, but I just don't feel like they went there because from what they make it seem like they went all around that bitch and discovered everything that could be discovered on the moon. And I just feel like they didn't. Like, I just feel like the moon is small, but it's not small enough to just land out on that bitch once, discover everything, and then leave. That's just me. <laughs> we didn't explore the entire moon. Right, so why haven't we been back? We went like three times. And know. Russia went to a different part of the moon. I think the arms race was a fallacy, and they wanted to prove who got there first. Okay. I don't even, I don't even know if Russia went there. They could have. Who knows? But Russia seemed grimy. We all seemed grimy. Like, you really think they they invest a lot of money in it. But, like, it just seems like what was the race for if y'all wasn't going to, like, really utilize what was out there? And granted, it could be nothing out there. But it's like... I don't believe they figured it out <laughs> that nothing was out there. Actually, I do feel like, I, I feel like there's been rovers there. Like, I feel like they got footage okay. of the moon via that. Like, I think we've sent things there. I just don't, I just don't, I'm not convinced that we were actually sitting there, actually jumping around with a flag and planting it, but that's just me. Okay. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say that, um, what am I going to say? That this happened before the internet. 
So if that mm-hmm. if that helps or help or hurts at all, I'm gonna say I do believe that people have gone to the moon. Um, I believe that people have lost lives trying to go to the moon. And, I agree. Um, I think that's most definitely true. That's wild. But this article is actually about the people who are conspiracy theorists. So mm-hmm. it's not really having doubt in the government or uh, like the Cold War, but about things like um, how people who continuously resort to conspiracy theories do this to fulfill unmet needs and to rationalize their distress. So basically, um, the people who believe in many conspiracy theories, like the Earth is flat, um, are identified as needing to understand and feel secure in their environment, and they would also like to have a sense of pure superiority, superiority over others. It's on some bullshit. I'm sorry. <laughs> the article or the moon? No, like the not the art. The article is very well written. So shout out to oh. that. <laughs> but being a conspiracy theorist and saying that you want to be opposite of people because listen i'm a contrarian okay but i'm not somebody who about to not think that things are real if that makes sense i mean i did just say i don't think they went to the moon but like that's that's whatever (laughs) yeah i'm saying that is distrust in the government which is not Mm -hmm. quite on the level that this article is talking about like the earth being flat is crazy yeah like these participants perceive social threats um, and they believe in event-based conspiracy theories like planned September 11th terrorist attacks, um, the the 5G um, COVID conspiracy, mm-hmm. uh, Pizza Gate thinking that uh, Hillary Clinton organized uh, underground conspiracy to kidnap and sell children under a pizza place you know it's like people who are continuously falling Mm -hmm. into holes of Mm -hmm. impossible behavior or impossible thoughts or not impossible thoughts but you know what i'm talking about so they're like so they that's like mentally unstable territory yes but this article is saying that people prone to believe in conspiracy theories, it is not simply like mentally unwell, but there are objectives that they are meeting through these things. Does that make sense? Yes and no. Okay. It's like you say it's like not directly mental health based, but they're mm-hmm. accomplishing goals that they set for themselves by doing this, correct? Um, let's otherwise, see. Because otherwise, I don't know what they're accomplishing by always thinking something is not right, if that makes sense. You know, like I said, like I got my little my little dips and daps, but I'm not out here thinking that the world is something that is not. Yes. So it's more like many turn to conspiracy theories to fulfill deprived most motivational needs and make sense of distress and impairment. Mm. So if you're wondering why the United States government is not like a, a socialism where we provide for everyone, where there's true freedom, where everyone can truly pursue happiness, then you may think, oh, the American government was actually created to destroy Americans and some rich people want to take all the land and so they're going to ruin Hawaii and the volcano was fake and Biden doesn't want to help Hawaii. It's like that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So like you hit one point in your life where it's like none of this is my fault. This is actually the government and it's because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I mean, the government is at fault for a lot of things, but I feel you. I feel it. Yes, but there's a difference between the mm-hmm. logical evidence. Yes, like slavery versus like, you know, all this other stuff. Yes, it's like mm-hmm. if someone didn't believe in Jim Crow 
and felt like black people rewrote the history of America in the nineteen eighties. Damn, so white people are all conspiracy theorists. White people. <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks that shit happened for real. Yes. And then, I mean, on the more Black side of things, it's like believing that all Black people were royalty mm-hmm. or believing all Black people were Israelites and mm-hmm. were the special ones. It's like stuff like that is very like created from people's need to make sense of how things are okay, that's that's true that that really opened up a lot because like i mean and that one thing that you said about the royalty thing is one positive aspect of that like okay do you do we like get mad at that or like because that's it's not true everybody couldn't have been royal like you know no. damn, we were some terrible royal royal people if we all end up in this boat like yeah. it's crazy right so I don't think everybody was royal, but just thinking of you potentially being part, I guess, of that royal lineage and having confidence in yourself to like want to strive to just know that you're, you know, basically royalty could potentially help people like, you know, give them a, an extra drive in their life. So I know people yeah. whose favorite colors are literally purple and gold because they feel like they're kings and queens. Yeah, but I mean, that goes back to my original statement. Most people who are prone to conspiracy theories are identified to need and understand and feel secure in their environment and have a sense of security over everything. Yeah, you hit it, yeah. That's real. Like, I'm definitely not doubting everyone who um, believes a conspiracy theory or two or have an inkling of things are not being correctly represented mm-hmm. by our government or institutions like a hundred percent a healthy dose of suspicion is correct not that anything's not correct mm-hmm. but that's just you know what i'm saying people who are um, paranoid anxious feel unrest um, they're more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. So I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like we should all be in that state of being or no? Because I feel like being anxious is not fun. Having anxiety is not like a joke. It's not fun. Like I'm not saying that. But sometimes you have to like kind of not be anxious, but you have to know your surroundings, right? You have to be conscious. Mm-hmm. Of what's going on around you so the only way you become conscious of like all your surroundings usually is you being anxious about where you are correct and understanding you know what position you are in the world right so i think you need some level of like anxiety in the world to be able to keep yourself safe if that makes sense i'm not trying to say like people need to have anxiety or yeah like, but i think you have to have like at least like a little semblance of like okay something could happen I'm anxious around something potentially being able to happen, even if that's 1%. So I should be able to know where I'm at at all times. That makes sense. Just in case something goes down. What you're saying totally makes sense. And it's what our brains do. Um, Like coincidentally, just talked about this on the last episode, but our brains um, are almost always on like PTSD time. Mm -hmm. So any previous experience that hurt our brain resulted in us being hurt was a negative impact our brain keeps that in mind and applies it to every situation afterwards now if you're asking me if that's something everyone should have if everyone's brain should be on such a level of almost like prey to predator Mm -hmm. no um i think that those fears do create um works perception of what world of what the world really is so all in all i think that having that blinder is helpful to many people but it's also what people refer to as baggage not being able to perceive the world as it is because of your personal experiences fears and anxiety yeah that's real that's why i think like obviously too much of it will um debilitate you what word i'm trying to say mm-hmm. like basically take you out of it 
Like, when yeah. I'm, I've never had an anxiety attack myself, but I've seen it and I've seen how handicapped you become in that little short time frame of being able to like actually do things just because your brain is running at such a high like frequency. So it's you know, like I, I agree. Like it's not like, you know, everybody should be able to, you know, deal with that because, you know, everybody not gonna have that. But I do feel like everybody should be conscious about other people's anxiety and their own because sometimes somebody could be at one percent somebody else could be at 78 somebody could be at 99 they could be on a breaking point where they just it's just going so you know all about knowing where you are a hundred percent yeah and there's definitely like even saying these things you would think that I would apply them to myself but I don't. I have social anxiety. And every time I enter a room, I fear that someone doesn't like me. I replay um, some of the worst first impressions I've been told by others. Uh, that I'm standoffish, that I look mean, that I have like a bitch face, um, that I have a big presence. And so all of those things are what I'm thinking of when I enter a room and it causes me to panic. And some days I can't pretend to be my bumbly self. I'm just like frozen on the inside. No, I agree. No, I, I feel that. Like, and uh, that's a really good point. Like when you said we always live in, you said it's earlier about the always living in a state of PTSD because you just brought up the fact that you've been talking to somebody let's say you talk to somebody and then they told you what their first impression of you were and it wasn't what you wanted it to be so that can make you be like, okay I really don't want to come off that way ever again as somebody so you kind of you know get into an anxious like little mode like okay off a rip just like that like people okay I'm when I explain myself to people they don't believe me but I am an introvert <laughs> I'm an introvert with extroverted qualities like I yeah I love being by myself that's how I rejuvenate that's how I recharge to be in the world to be extroverted so when I'm a, in a big group of people I don't necessarily know where I fit into the conversation I always say something super weird when it comes to like <laughs> when I'm in a big group like not even like like weird weird but like I would just say something random like, it's never yeah alone the conversation wouldn't be I don't know what it is when it's like I can do two people at the same time but like if it's like three four or five more I won't say four and five mm, plus me I'm I don't know what I don't know what to say like I like y'all all talking about surface level things like we not even talk about if it's something real we talking about like and we all talking about like Let's say somebody made a move on Big Brother and I literally can contribute. I I'm a big fan of Big Brother Survivor and shit. I'm pretty sure this is a bad example because I'm about to tell you. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even put my two cents in it. <laughs> like I'd just be like, oh, okay, yeah, it was fine. But yeah. if I'm talking to one person one on one, I might get into a de- more detailed explanation and be like, okay, this is why I feel like this was good or bad because this. I don't know. I just have always struggled in like big groups. So like what helped me out when I was running a lot of games online, like a lot of the Zoom games, like when I had to like rally everybody in and control the room, Mm -hmm. I started learning how to like have, I guess, more of a presence in front of a lot of people. But that was an implicit presence because I was the host. So they had to listen to me. But like, if I'm just like a regular schmegular person in a conversation, I don't have that same pretense. So I've been trying to like, work myself to a point where I'm able to like engage in group conversation but if it's not like people I like naturally talk to or like I'm a struggle like in like a new group setting you know what's crazy is that we are so similar and like I'm gonna describe it in a slightly different way but we're so the same and it's that it's hard to get to know people in bigger groups Mm-hmm. I'm a genuinely curious person. I like meeting people and getting to know mm-hmm. them. I like finding out things about a person, what they're doing, what they like. And that's not fit for groups of like three or more. And so on the other side of that, I can host a comedy club. 
I can host shows. I have done presentations, workshops, talking to like a classroom more people, easy. Talking to one or two people, enjoyable. Anything outside of that, girl, give me the cue cards. I don't know what I'm saying. I just diverted the topic. They're ignoring what I just said. Okay. 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 (laughs) That's so funny. That's really what happens. They ignore you and or they will just change the subject. You're like, damn. Like, I took this whole time trying to think of something to say. I said this. And now we're not even talking about this no more. Be serious. <laughs> like, my bad, bro. Oh, I messed the jug up. I like, oh. So yeah, that I wasn't, think... that wasn't it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the exact same thing. That's just, no, I think it's the middle, the middle piece, like you said. Like, you good in small groups, you good commanding space, but like, it's just kind of like, when you're not the person that they're supposed to be listening to, I think that's what happens. Like having to, yeah, I, it's it's weird because it's just like an audience of like four, right? But everybody yeah. is the the host and the audience at the same time. Hate it. Ew. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay. No, I feel that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You know, I had such a great time. I always have a great time here. You know. Great sometimes I wish yes great time talking to you I sometimes I wish we actually lived near each other and I'm like mm. how do people have real internet friends I don't like being online okay <laughs> like I mean I think listen I think we can hang out and have fun uh maybe I'll come to Texas one time who knows I'll definitely go to DC at some point to protest I'm not DC I'm not in DC. oh wait you're not DC the other D the D, the main D, <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> oh, the Jay. one and only. <laughs> I don't know shit about Detroit sometimes. I mean, same shit, but no, yeah, Man, it's it's okay out here. It's fine. Damn, I really thought you were in DC. That's so crazy. No, it's okay. I was I was there not too long ago, a couple weeks, couple what, a month ago, two months ago. I went there for the first time. It was cool. I was There's like, oh my river god, walk? I, yes, river walk down there. Mm, not the river walk mm, it's nice it's nice we have memories there though now <laughs> that's that's a that's a story for the next for the next okay. show <laughs> i'm still getting over that one <laughs> okay all right we're winding down ganjo what do you have for the people um you can follow me on instagram at ganjo the dank that's g-a-n-j-o-d-a-d-a-n-k same on Twitter, but with a two at the end. And uh, and if you go there, then you will know what I'm about to be doing. When I finally dropped the Mega Mile, so I recorded this show. Mm-hmm. So it was the first one. You know, it's gonna be cute. Basically, it's a mile. You had to run around a track, right? But before you keep you kept completing the mile, you had to do a challenge after every lap. So it was a one v one battle between my guy Larry and my boy Taco. And we're going to see who came out on top and who's the first winner of the Mega Mile. So that should be released soon. So you'll see that when I release that on my Instagram, if you follow me. And, you know, that's it. I'm chilling right now. Uh, I'm working on, you know, other games. So we're going to see in the future the whole um, gambit once I start uh, recording and editing, you know, my little one-day games and see if you want to play one day. Nice. Getting some videos together. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see them. Um, as for me, next episode of Variety Half Hour will be with a good friend named Colby. Um, and it might be the last episode of Variety Half Hour for the season, as me and I know, but me and Colby, Colberton, CC, um, we're going to be starting our together podcast called the the, uh, what is it? I think it's like anxiety brunch hour or something. Basically, yeah. we're going to be doing an anxiety brunch podcast together. That's beautiful. I'm so excited to hear that. Mm. Yes. So thank you for being one of my last guests today. It's of been course. great having you on. 
always a, an amazing time. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope you have a good day. All right. Bye.